because it's so true and really actors get it. But you really gave some perspective to the outside world looking in like those guys like Christian Bale when they do Batman, when they play superheroes, when they talk a certain way. It's so true because I'm like, I always think I got to play Lex cooler than this. I can't be Rosenbaum. Sure, Fuck, no one sure. wants Rosenbaum as Lex Luthor. I can't be like, hey, Clark, do you? we should go fucking, uh, I don't know, driving my Porsche? Who says Porsche? Yeah. And then so there was sort of like a reserved kind of thing that I wasn't used to doing that I got used to doing. It wasn't that I completely went, okay, Tom, here's right. what we're doing. But you have, t tell me about that. Tell the audience who hasn't heard that, that theory you have. Yeah, that was, I think that was a Rolling Stone interview. And part of it was like the conditions of being, because, uh, you know, you and I both play iconic. Uh, you know, there, there was like a, when I play, um, I play the reverse flash for, for the people who don't know on the show, which is like, that's the arch enemy of the flash. The flash is played winningly by Grant Gustin. and the 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 reverse flash is played serviceably by by Tom Cavanaugh and you know they're they're arch enemies they're, the reverse flash is the the Joker to the Flash's Batman and um, when you're playing like a, one of those arch enemies you know there's a there's a catalog of this is how we do it as part of the pantheon and <clears throat> the thing that I used to come into is the debacle of ten yards versus forty yards <laughs> because if he's, if you're down the street and I'm like, you know, to catch me alive, Michael, you know, I land, I boom, I do the superhero thing. Boom. Do you remember, this is an aside. You're going to love this. There was a time in the late nineties, uh, early aughts when, when they were doing, uh, Michael Rosenbaum and you were on NBC, right. And they were doing a promo for you. They wanted, you remember they did all those promos oh, for yeah. all that. They wanted you and your co-star. When they were doing your solo, they wanted you to do this. Ready? And action. <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah, I do. It, and they they'd slow wanted, it down. They even slow it down a little out, more. It bled out from the entertainment industry into sports so that Drew Brees, quarterback for the New Orleans Saints, and he'd be like, he'd have a ball and he'd be like, <sighs> I remember watching all, like Eli Manning and all these guys just be like, when they like write their number, like just kind of looking up, right? And it's sort of, it's still there. But it used to be at, at an 85% barometer. And now it's kind of comes in around 30. But there was that thing where they also like, they did this too. When it was, you know, when you were like, you would like, you were kind of that kind of thing away from the. Just kind of swaying back and forth. Yeah, but, you remember that? Yeah. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thing, like, you felt so stupid we, doing these promos. And then you kind of would do this, like, oh, wait, oh. You know, you do the like the spin around. I'm sitting on a chair, a spinning chair, spinning around. Yeah, yeah. Completely. You... They were on that. You're on a turntable, and you're like, <laughs> and they were gonna cut away, but there was that always that great moment where like they didn't cut away, and you were still like, still kind of oh. looking when you're. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so for these kind of like stereotypical moments to break out of, it's very difficult, as you know, to break out of them because this is how it's done in the comic book, right? Right. Rarely is the guy, you know, like who's just like completely. Hey, Clark, <laughs> you know, because Clark's like, nah, you know what? You're not a worthy opponent. I'm e Superman. Even from 40 feet away, but you think, but no, because you did this whole thing where you're like, someone's yelling and you're like, or yeah. so here's what it is. So I'd be like, <laughs> if it was you and I facing off, I'd be like, I'd land, bang. And I'd be like, you'll never take me alive, Michael. And then you'd be like, I I'm, I'll never, you want some fries? No, I'm sick. Never take me alive, Michael. I, I'm I. Is, well, you need a ride or a cycle. <laughs> no, you'll never take me alive, Michael. I'm I'm so sorry. It's like, no, never mind. Just never mind. You know. And that yeah. was the guy. He was ordering the guy that I was doing on Rolling Stone. Was he was basically ordering sushi. He was ordering food in a restaurant. <laughs> oh, and they're like, I'm sorry. You'll have that. Well, you all just have water. But it's because, cool. It, that's the cool voice. And when you're far away, I don't know how many times I've said that. Where I'm talking to. You know, you're right, Clark, across the room. And he's like, and I'm just like, Clark. And they could never hear you. No. They're like, what are you saying, Clark. dude? Right, I'm not cool. When, when, they, when they air this, it won't be cool. It'll be cool now. And how many times have you seen, I've had guest stars come on, and they're even quieter than anybody I've ever heard. And I'm talking to them. I'm like, um, I need you to check up on this scientist. I want you to check him on. I was like, sir, we haven't found any information. I don't, what? I can't hear what you're saying. 
And he kept doing it. I'm like, oh, fuck, this guy's going to be terrible. And then you see it, and you're like, God, that guy was great. <laughs> he yeah. was so intense. I got to do the lower register voice. <laughs> it's the magic of the 100 to 150 millimeter, millimeter lens, <laughs> where they're like, I can be way over here. But on TV, it's going to be like this. <laughs> I can be as quiet as I want. 